you know, like no, all the it was just literally be like Call of Duty all over again, where they literally all they just do is change the title, but it's the same game. Mm. Just reading a lot of casual spend. Okay, just reading. Yes, you could be casual and still be in high chapters because of B Zhang. Listen, we're we're not going to talk about B Zhang. <laughs> We're going to talk about bias and why not be saying. What I will say though is for a fighting, for an idol fighting game, um, B Zangief is definitely in the right field. Um, because how I see it is personally, grapplers are low key always busted in some way, shape, or form, <laughs> and he, he fits that, that to a T. You know, look at Street Fighter 6, Geef grabbing you from half a screen away on a light grab. Yo, I saw that and I was like, "Oh my god, yeah. grapplers are gonna be hated." No, that's that's the thing. I'm a I'm a grappler main, with the exception of a couple of games. Um, so I'm I'm really looking forward to the beta. I'm gonna be playing that most of tomorrow. <laughs> See, if we're talking about Street Fighter Six, I have a little issue with it. it oh god, the, it it the hits don't feel impactful. Like if, if you look at Street Fighter V, you know the difference between a light and a heavy because there's impact. That, but in Street Fighter VI, every hit looks exactly the same. There's there's nothing to indicate it. it it's not like um, I don't want to say immersive, but I don't think that's the word. No, I get what you mean. Um, and what I will say um, is I can actually talk a little bit about this because um, I've done well. I, a whole long story short, but I've done a couple of modules on that at university for it. And the whole point is just the pipeline of their game development. Since the game is just around the corner and it's in beta, they're testing server functionality and just the last things over the polish. So when the game does come out, hopefully that should be fixed. If not, then it's just been like a really gross overlook on their site because, you know, Capcom's a big company. Um, But that's the only thing I could really think of, you know. It's beta. They've got people coming, they kind of just want to stress test the servers, make sure the connection's good, make sure everyone's having fun. And then we can get all of, you know, like the full roster, all of the, the glitz and then when the games come out. Yeah, that, that that does make sense. It's just something I'm a little bit scared of. Because I I, I like how impactful they are in Street Fighter Five. It, it, it gives it it gives it like character and everything like that. I, oh, I guess because like well, I, I guess it's because like I, I know um Street Fighter Six is actually catered to casuals too. Yeah, they, they they've added whole new like ma- I don't know about no. that completely catered to new players. Like you can do a full combo with one button. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can literally just push square, and then give it the greatest person ever to ever do it's so. Scary. Like it's, it's terrifying. Scary. It is terrifying. But I guess that I guess that that's where it is. It's like, is I guess it's my fear is is that is there enough players for the churn? Like I obviously for Street Fighter Six oh, is a different dynamic yeah. versus mobile and Street Fighter duels. But like, is there enough to keep? Like how how is because. Uh, I'm jumbling. So they initially stated that the game has done at least ten times what they exe- they they have expected. So in mm. my mind, I'm like, all right, sweet. So you could also technically say that they have that amount of player base extra that they weren't expecting to have before. Wouldn't as a business, it I guess re- why isn't retention more important? Like, how does that work versus where it is now? Like, because it's early in the game? Okay. Most people... Most the game is still in its infancy. Drop. They aren't committed Sorry. to the title. Okay. Yeah, the the game is... Um, the game is still in its infancy, so it doesn't really... It hasn't... It doesn't have a lot... It doesn't have a lot to... To prove, necessarily... It just has to it, it just has to function at this level for a little while to to um to nurture who who they ha- already have or who they've already kept right like so if if you've noticed 
over time, the the players who come into the game, they don't have as much as as we do, obviously. But at the same time, our game progression is different than somebody who's just jumping into the game also. So it's still rewarding to players who continue to play the game, but also um, when a new player walks in, and this is a topic that I talked about last week, it's, you know, how, how, how welcoming is the game to somebody who jumps in after Dante? Because then Dante is gone. There's no Monster Hunter Ken. And so they see these, they see these event characters and they see Bisons and they see, um, they see Fashion Blancas and stuff. So it, it, it really depends on who's walking into the game to look at these kinds of things and be like, I want to be a part of this or I want to strive to be a part of this. Otherwise, they're going to play it for maybe two or three weeks and move on to the next thing. But the players that stay and, you know, enjoy the game for what it is. I'm sorry. My seatbelt thing's beeping. Uh, the players that stay <laughs> and see the game for what it is, they're, they are rewarded in, in, in a way that they're, they're participating. So it's doing well to nurture it. But the, um, the new players are, are, more, are suffering for more than more to FOMO than most most of us. I would say. So it's not an observation of player retention more than it is. It's in a it's an evolving ecosystem of, of the community. So some people stay, some people leave, some people um take a break and come back. But the game is so new and we've experienced so much in the game so far, so quickly it's really hard to it's really hard to quantify what we need to do to keep it running when it's going to it's gonna, obviously going to keep running for a little while longer so i i would say at least in my personal opinion like the there should be some kind of there should be some kind of incentive for new players to jump in soon like how they do codes for other older games but we're not going to be experiencing that kind of thing for a while Okay, so here's my question then. How would you guys... How would you guys... It's a multiple part. How do you guys expect the game to be in four months from now? And attached to that, how would you like it to be in four months from now? Because I'm assuming your expectations versus likes which should be different unless they're you know on the same point. Are we talking about Street Fighter 6 or Street Fighter Duel now? Yeah, Street Fighter Dose. With, 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 how would you how how do you expect the game to be with how everything is? How do you expect the game to be in four months? And how would you like it to be in four months? Any, anyone? I, I don't care. Who, if someone could take it. Oh, um, I'll start. Uh, so just to just to put things into perspective on the time frame. So the game's been out for two months, correct? So March. On uh March April May yeah so the game's been out for yeah, two months uh, three, yeah, three two months, months. So we're we're pushing next, the end of third month yeah so if we if we just if we double so we're now we're we're attempting to make an observation on the doubling the lifespan of the game so um in four months in four months I'd like to see myself um getting into chapter. 31 maybe 32 i'm at chapter 24 right now you know i'm just i'm kind of taking it casually um so if anybody else is going to chime in on this observation keep in mind that uh this is this is a like i'm i'm using it as like a personal observation for me i don't expect i don't know what to expect with the other players but i can tell you in four months from now i want to see myself in in the the chapter 30 or so because I'm at chapter 25 right now. Um, I want to see the guilds and the servers start to become more um, homogenous or just a better, there's a better flow for the guild members and the, and the users on servers that um, probably aren't as active anymore, just so that the quality of life for the community improves. I want to see that in the next four months. Uh, I want to see different types of content that put emphasis on um, the B rank characters and 
you can expand the roster without outright power creeping the entire roster by creating a set of content that requires um special types of units for special types of content so if there's a type of content that uses b rank fighters and you gotta you gotta save your b rank fighters and use those b rank fighters I, I would like to see that um that way it creates more content for characters that are just being tossed in the bin um as far as pvp goes i think the ecosystem for pvp is is okay i don't i wouldn't know what a perfect pvp ecosystem would be like uh as far as new units out power creeping other units um i don't want to see any outright uh buffs or nerfs to characters i want to see new features come to the game that explore a uh, character's kit more or allows for uh team building for other characters to shine like um if they're an assassin like i want to see more buffs to the, the classes instead of just outright changing a unit maybe items that changes how assassins interact with tanks or how tanks interact with supports and things like that so there's we've classified the fighters in such a way so that way we can distinguish a tank from a support but i'd like to see items um more than gear maybe even different types of cars or something that really changes the dynamic on the faction not only the factions but the the classes and subclasses also um what was the other timeline turtle was it a four month four month timeline yeah, just a general, like, where do you see the game in four months, and where would you like it to be in four months? Because, like, I would, I, like now I would that like I'm to see... seeing things differently, because, like, Dino mentioned, he says that most people haven't even unlocked Divination, and and yeah. then uh, Casual asked, like, what is the, the criteria of, like, most people? Is it within uh, an active player base within 40, who has logged in within 48 hours? Dino responded, yep, and he also said this is why... There may be divination units to motivate them to hit their verse uh, because of a different point of view. So it's 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 just now that like I'm seeing this is like if we're three months in and seventy percent of the player base is not even is barely touching chapter ten, I can understand where they're talking about like oh this game is gonna last for years because if. Three months to chapter 10. I mean, I was in chapter 10 within, like, the first two hours of playing the game, seriously. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, it, everybody's, like... So, the, the thing about the voice that we have in Discord is... And um, kind of supplement uh, Dino's point about the player base. So, these kinds of discussions that we're having on Discord, um, in the channels, in this voice chat, um, even the people on Reddit and YouTube... Like the voices that we have and our observations and points that we have on the game are completely different than a casual player. Because like a casual player, they don't really like if they're not going on YouTube and coming to Discord or going to Reddit to learn about the game, then the, the game is just on a back burner for them in general. They're not gamers. So like um the game itself isn't balanced for hardcore gaming. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's kind of sad because I brought up the point about how Street Fighter as a title itself, as a fighting game, and the bon there's the boundaries that are set in that type of game and the boundaries that we have in this type of game that we play are completely different. The only thing that they share are, are the assets and the intellectual property, the characters and the moves and whatnot. But they... They couldn't. They couldn't be more different games in general because you can sit and play a fighting game for twenty four hours and become a master at it. But you know, you could get stuck on chapter thirty, you know, thirty dash forty for two days, and you know, not really make any progression. So, but the acceler the the accelerated completion for individuals that are like us is. The example I would say that the game's not balanced for people like us, or or people who 
um, do their research and really put their time and effort into a game. Which, you know, for is, is that a successful product? Maybe we're, we're still talking about the game two months afterwards and we're talking about a four-month window and a, and a yearly window. And we'll keep playing the game regardless of what they've already done or accomplished so far. Um, but I, I want to really take a step back from um, how we're approaching players like us and players that Dino is talking about because they're two different people. So like Dino is talking about people who have this game on their phone and they check it every one or two days, you know, and they play for less than they play for less than an hour or two hours. Hmm. Sorry, I, I have to. Um, no, I'm just, just reading what Dom, Dom Buka said because he brought he brought up a really good point. I'm just curious like, if he was willing to expand on it a little bit more. Because, like, in terms of... It's a fair point. I, I, said, I said it earlier, like, um, and I've been meaning to write something in the game feedback discussion, but the way that I look at it with the guilds and the servers, it's not, it's not promoting, it's not promoting, nurturing, or enriching the existing community. Like, we can't, it's actually, it's a detrimental to the, to the health of the community because you're prohibiting community engagement within the game, like between the servers and the the guilds and the the guild events. Like, how are you supposed to have a guild event where communication and um, a gr you need a group, but you're you're limiting people on what groups they can join. I mean, so what? Yeah, so so what? Yeah. Well, to 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 be to be fair, our our points are valid on this topic. At least I feel they're valid. But the um the thing is, is like I don't know what's what's the timeline that it that it's gonna take for them to 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 uh what's the timeline that they we, that we've been prohibited and what's the timeline for them to finish? Like I I'd rather be more critical of how long it's them it's taking them instead of expecting a certain day like. If this takes if this takes two months and we have two guild effigy events in those two months, we've already had one guild effigy event where you couldn't cross silver uh, cross server guilds. This is the second time. Like, when is it? Are we expecting the third guild effigy to be better? What about other types of guild content that we're gonna have to do later on? <clears throat> that part is concerning to me the most. Is like. If even if the new players are casual players and this game is geared for casual players and we're only supposed to be playing this game an hour or two a day and the or maybe even forty eight hour intervals or whatever have you the the metric the the other part of the game is in, is enriching all players' experiences not just the casual people so if we have a dedicated group of twenty thousand members in the Discord. Who are communicating with each other and trying to get and trying to take advantage of the guild content and the you know or even being friends i can't be friends with people from eu for some reason i don't know how that works or what the that's a what the overhead thing. is that i can kind of understand okay i that that i don't the only reason i brought it up is because i don't understand it but yeah, like two different at the same point oh, okay yeah so the the Mind you, look how long yeah, that's it took us to get cross, look how long it took us to get cross console cross cross you know interaction between consoles and PC. That was that that that, that, miles. Was, that was. That was I'm huge, not expecting guys. it in a mobile game. Look, yo, dogs. Soul Calibur Two was on PlayStation, Xbox, and GameCube, my dog, and that was like 2002, bro. Yeah, however... Nah, I just <laughs> Server maintenance. All satire aside, though, like, the, 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 
we don't know what this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I to be more critical about it just for a sec. It's like okay, so we don't know. We we won't we won't ever be educated on the overall costs. We won't be educated. Um, there's certainly people smarter than me who maintain these servers and code all of this shit into the game. Part of my French, um, but you know, it's I I I'm maybe we're being too maybe I'm being too critical, but we're I don't know I don't know if they're trying to reinvent the wheel or not. It kind of seems like they're trying to reinvent the wheel, and. Um, it just that's very disappointing if they are. It's just my my big thing with the and out of respect to the the conversation about guilds and servers is like be that as it may that this is a casual game for casual gamers and the monetization is set by the, the developers and this that and this that you still have a dedicated community of of twenty thousand people in the Discord if we're using that metric right. Because if you have Discord on your phone, you're a gamer, right? You don't just have Discord on the phone if you work on, on a farm and you don't care about video games. Like, if you have Discord on your phone or on your PC or whatever, you're, you're dedicated to gaming in some capacity. So being that there's 20,000 of us in the Discord and we're all calling for guild and server... um. I guess the wrong word is fluidity, but like you're, it's detrimental when even when new players jump on and they're like, "Oh, I want to join a guild so I can be part of this game and this and support the community and sh and stuff like that." It's tough because we got to tell them, "Oh yeah, we're not in the same server, bud. Or you're you're EU and I'm NA. We can't be friends. Like I can't loan you out. I can't loan you out my five my five star doll sim and make you excited about the game." Oh, free to play casual. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so let's look at it through this lens also. If you create, if you create a ecosystem where all of the whales can get into one server and battle for each other, is that going to be okay? Are we all going to, are we all going to unanimously, unanimously agree that even though the cross server guilds um, function is great even though the NAEU split is gone and everybody can be friends with everybody at what point are we going to expect ourselves like to be okay with the whale I'm, I'm okay with the whales just being in their own in their own vicinity like I'm not I'm not trying to be a, I'm not trying to be in their world or where they exist in the game at all I don't think I'll ever do that um, but it it creates it creates a kind of disparity 
for some players that they might feel like they um they that they uh that they they aren't uh, really accomplishing something. So it, it takes a lot of of um takes a lot of mental fortitude to to get to that point. Like okay, so this this entire guild is Wales, and this this is actually something that had me quit a game that I loved a lot is because the guild that they had introduced guild wars. And um, I got kicked out of my guild because I didn't I didn't spend enough money or spend enough gems, and I felt bad because I put a lot of time in that that guild and it, it really broke my heart and so I stopped I stopped playing. That's the honest truth. Yeah, yeah. So that part that part for me was the hardest because I I had um I had joined the guild community and they had they had, I had ultimately said like hey listen you're you're a cool guy you can still stay in our our Discord server. Um, but we're gonna have to remove you from the guild because we we want to be competitive, like more competitive than what you are. So like that environment and those kinds of situations are bad for the community. So we it would have to there would have to be a certain like um grow. There's gonna be a lot of growing pains when we do that. I just want to point that out, like. I'm all for it. I want to. I just want. I want everybody to hang with everybody. But at the same time, in in my experience, and and the game, game was um Dragon Quest Tactics made by Square Enix, published by Square Enix, um, so like they're they they had no, they well they didn't have a friends list. They didn't have a friends list. It was just guild, um. But I got kicked out of my guild, and I had some pretty. I had been playing since day day zero, pretty much. You know what I mean? That I pre downloaded the game. I was ready to play day one, um, and I got kicked out of my guild. And I was just like, you know what? I don't even want to play anymore. Because like my peers, my peers weren't satisfied with what I was doing, and and I wasn't willing to spend the kind of money that they were. <clears throat> so it, by right, I was kind of freeloading, just like what they wanted to accomplish. I was just being a part of it. I was doing my part for what I could do, but they they had moved on, and I had moved on from the game since then, and. Uh, it breaks my heart to to say that out loud today, but I don't want that. I don't want that to happen to anybody in in our game. But at the same time, not having guilds available to everybody is also a bad thing. So it's a double edged sword, really. Definitely, um, but I do feel like there's also ways to handle that with you know guild versus guild content. Because um, I came from. A gacha game that, oh, I say gacha game, an idol game that I was playing before Street Fighter Duel came out called uh, Mythic Heroes. And they had something really interesting with their guild versus guild. So it was like the top, I think it was like the top 30, maybe top 31 strongest players in the guild would represent your guild for the guild wars. Um, but everybody in the guild could contribute to it so like in the middle of the arena or whatever it was the battleground there would be like this this torch or this kind of flame pillar and you could put buffs in there that would affect your guild and the way you got that was by hitting the guild boss every day essentially and then you'll get random items dropped and then you put that sort of thing in um so i definitely feel like there's ways that you know, that we could handle guild versus guild to make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen, you know, people getting kicked out of their guild because they're not competitive enough. Um, but again, the the main issue that we've got, especially in this game compared to a lot of other games where it comes to that kind of guild competitiveness, is just making sure that the system works in the first place. I like that. I, I, I think... Um... I think we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. I mean, after after this guild effigy, we'll see we'll see what the what what the um what how the community responds to it or like if I haven't seen a lot of new people in the Discord lately. Not a lot of white names. Maybe some banana people. Um. Yeah, they're mostly. Yeah.
Yeah, I I think that's fine too. Um, you know, banana people. Yeah, I remember the early days. The early days. The early days banana peoples. I remember when some of y'all was banana people. I was there. <laughs> um, um, scared yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the banana people like they they were some wild. There was a wild mix. Um, but uh, let me, let me just recap real quick what we we're talking about. Like the four month window guild servers, the pros and cons to guild servers. Um, what else were we talking about? Yeah, you. Oh yeah, player retention. Yeah, I, I, uh, I can, I can still elaborate on that topic if you guys were, if anybody had any more points on. It. <laughs> oh, uh, Nintendo does it. Nintendo does it. We fit. We fit. That's definitely a Nintendo thing. They tell you to go outside, and it's like, whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah. But well, yeah, I think I I think I alluded it to it uh, earlier. It's like the the welcome the welcome mat for new players is are all of these menus and check ins and stuff like that. It's a it's a pretty high learning curve to get into this game. So like like the kind of people that we are, we look into this stuff and be like, okay, so I got this free and Ryu and I got Makoto from the jump. Should I do I need to re roll? Like that right there tells you a lot about a player. If if that's the first question they have about the game, what is the reroll guide? And it's like, okay, so that separates you from the casual player. So now now you have to put yourself in the casual player's shoes. They're like pressing buttons and trying to figure out what the characters do, or like they're just pr doing stuff on auto without knowing exactly what they're doing and stuff like that. It's it's hard to even fathom that that person exists especially when it's a street fighter game especially when it's a phone game it's like really hard to fathom what that person's mindset is so like the welcome mat or the um expectations of the game for that type of player whether they started yesterday or two months ago like they they don't they don't really see it a certain way that we that we do so in in my head Guys who start who start the let's say my example is that who's the guy starting the game after Dante comes out? They walk into the game, they see Dante, they see they see Akuma in another banner with a whole set of different tickets, and then they see Monster Hunter Can. And they like, how do we get those characters with these special emblems and these animated um character icons? You know what I mean? So like that to me is like what that that new guy's looking for or maybe that guy just likes guile you know what i mean some guys just like guile and they're like i just want to get more guiles so they're just going to keep playing the game till they get more guiles like the the mindset the mindset for that type of player is is hard to rationalize at least from my point of view so if we're going to make an observation on what the what is the welcome mat look like for something somebody like that i honestly can't but to to agree with don buka's point you still need to nurture and supplement your dedicated player base 
in a in a balanced and controlled way as to not feel like you're um alienating your existing players and rewarding new players like i don't think new players have ever been in a position where they're getting more stuff than existing players the game is just way too young for them like the game is the game is two months old like there's we're all still new players but we're just a different type of player like i um but i i'll, I'll say it again i i agree with don Puka's point like we need to we need to enrich the people that are already here um to but i don't think i don't think we they absolutely need to dial up that type of of um attention to us because the game is still doing well and the game is still the game is still existing like there's no pressure there's no pressure on the devs to to make any changes beyond like um like what's the next character coming out or like the next like there's no pressure on the devs right now I'll say I'll say that outright right now. There's no pressure. They have there's nothing pressuring the devs at all to to make any changes. If Dino is if what Dino is saying is true, and I I have I'm inclined to believe him. Like they don't really. If nobody's at if if nobody's at divination, like when new people jump into the Discord. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's big facts. My fault. Yeah, he has no reason to lie. But like when the first thing somebody jumps into Discord and they're like, "What should I be doing right now?" It's like, did you pass fifteen forty or not? And don't spend your gems. You know, that's the first. That's the very first thing. Like, you if you haven't passed fifteen forty, you, you aren't really playing this game. You're just you're tapping buttons. That's it. You're not playing the game. I'm 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 being real, dude. Like, yeah, like you like you haven't even scratched the surface of the game yet. Yeah, like. Come on. Yeah. The game doesn't. The game doesn't challenge you to create a theory until you hit fifteen forty. In my in my opinion, and you know what? I'll I'll be, I'll be honest, and I'm. This is really by uh. I like the game to tank. <laughs> As a community person, I'd like the game to tank so your messages get across faster. I'm I'm just reading what Dino was saying for the for podcast. Keep in mind they are looking at feedbacks weekly and have big convos around it. When it when it gets implemented, I myself don't know, but it's on the desk mind. And and that's fair. I mean it's you can't you can't expect changes like that to happen immediately. I mean to to I'm I'm giving them time to do it. I'm I'm honestly the things that I'm disappointed about in the game, I've, I've we've already talked about it. Um, but yeah, like the the welcome mat doesn't have to be super inviting for new players. Hey, congrats, fake you! You just beat thirty six thirty two. Um, but the game itself doesn't. The welcome mat doesn't have to be bigger, and the, we don't have to um hand feed the the existing players yet. The game is still new; it's still thriving. And it's not a ton of pressure on the devs, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing: when push comes to shove, and when the game starts tanking, that's when it's really going to be showtime, and that they're going to have to start pulling out all the stops. So I, I want to say it was last week or a couple weeks ago. Somebody asked a question, um, you know, what do we do if the game is dying? And I was like, of course, there's protocols in place to save the game. There's, there's got to be some kind of like red button or, or some kind of structure that they have to be like okay when when the game dips and what do we do like you can't really show your hand otherwise people are going to try and force your hand right i don't know i've been i've been talking way too long i could talk forever i don't know what's up what, what's up with you guys <laughs> yeah. oh yeah what's up i was just gonna bring up um FTP casuals comment, which uh, went over the why the devs or pretty much not just devs, but why do like publishers in Japan like don't, why don't they bring things globally? The reason why they don't is because they don't believe in the market. Like they don't believe you guys would spend money on the game because they see time and time again 
how global launches for games fail because people don't put money in. That's like 100% clear cut. And also they don't want to take risks because in their home countries, the games do really well and they don't want to risk bringing it to audiences that might not like it. So. Yeah. What kind of money are we talking about here? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Jeez. Nobody? Nobody? No? <laughs> that time. I wait. Okay. Uh, let me let me precursor that. I don't expect anybody to know the answer to that question. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, each, it, it, each company is different. You know, yeah. each, how they look at it, what their goals are. But from me working with Japanese publishers, I will say they have some very unrealistic goals um, yeah. from like previous companies I worked with, like incredibly unrealistic. Like for PSO2, they wanted 300,000 players, I remember but the game was like 50,000 globally. Yeah. So that should tell you the expectations for them and kind of like money wise, like what they might be looking at. So, you know. Factoring all that and understanding that it's, it's I difficult. played I played PSO one on Dreamcast like as a kid and I loved it. And then PSO two came around and I had like huge high hopes for it. And then I played it and yo, I dipped out real quick. Yeah. I really wanted to like the game, but it it was uh it's a I it's really a culture clash. It. I, I I would I would on like I would propose the question like what makes what what makes the difference is it is it money or players I think it has everything to do with the mindset and the culture of gamers in in different money. countries like yeah I mean that's why it's money. easier for Japanese publishers to sell or bid the IP to a different company that the other company who might be interested or invested in the IP would rather do yeah. so like Crunchyroll being in the picture Bandai Namco Amazon games now. So you have a lot of these like global companies that are starting to do this. So a mm -hmm. lot of the like Japanese will say, okay, uh, to be on the safer side, let them handle it. At the end of the day, we'll still get some revenue. They're obviously going to pay for the license to have the rights, etc. So like in the end, they're still in the net positive while their other game is doing really well. They don't lose anything in that regard. So that's why they don't bring it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, by, by right, like, anybody can learn a language and play a game. But, <laughs> just kidding. No, because I feel like each company, like, each company would, like, have a certain amount of money they would like to receive. And we also got a low pack. Even if they do bring it on um, global, or even if they do put out the game, there are certain countries where the value of the money is slow. Like for example, like, like um, give me a country like the Philippines, maybe the Philippines, like some certain time they can't value um the money value could be like so low that even if they spend a lot inside that country, to to developers and the person that's working inside the company is like a little bit money to them, because the difference, the value, the currency difference. So it's like even if they want to bring all the game in other countries and person may spend a lot of money. To them, it's not enough money they're receiving because the difference of the currency, their money may be way more than some other countries. Like one dollar could be like two thousand in some other country or twenty thousand. So it's like even if in other country they spend enough, it won't meet up to what they want it to be. So they might just shut on the game.
pesos in for Philippines? Uh, yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One US dollar is 55.7 Filipino pesos. So it's like 56 pesos. Yeah. But I don't know, I don't know what their what their economy is like. How much does a peso actually get you, you know? In Philippines? Who knows? You know what's crazy is my um my my in-laws are Filipino. They just came back. I should ask I'll ask them and I'll get I'll get to you that information. On a I on a good. smaller scale, maybe something you can understand like easier. I'm Canadian, so a ninety nine dollar pack that would be USD is a hundred and thirty four dollars Canadian, and then you pay tax on that. So that actually comes up depending where you live in Canada. Where I live, that would come up to about a hundred and just like a hundred and forty something dollars. Where one of my friends live. That same pack would be a hundred and sixty dollars in yeah. provincial tax. But then you'd have to, you'd have to factor, you'd have to factor in the average income. Like you would just take like Subway barista in Canada pay versus. American. Oh yeah, yeah. In my in my province, like minimum wage Five is bucks. pretty good. It's like uh, we're I think we're going up to like sixteen twenty five Canadian, but that's still equals up to like um, I think it's like thirteen dollars USD. You know, Wait, so. Yeah. Turtle, turtle. Okay, so, uh, well, I live in Indonesia, right? But then I moved to certain, like, the minimum wage, like, I don't know how you convert it, but it's, we call it dua juta, which is basically two, two million or two billion. But then um, two billion, it doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, it sounds like, but then two billion is the minimum wa wage standards for there. And two billion compared to USD is 1.5 billion is 100 dollars so then that's like a little bit above 100 dollars just for that yeah and that's the minimum wage okay so my question you break, question it, down is, right? saying, you break it down into hourly right so i don't know i don't let me look up the minimum wage of hawaii because minimum wage differs in the, between the states in in a, um in america so what is the hawaii is in, no, that's true, but like, um, I, I don't know the difference between like it because, like, uh, where I stay, it's not like the biggest city, not like Jakarta or stuff like that in Indonesia. Um, but then, like, just from the smaller cities and stuff like that, wage is like around that much. Yeah, so, it, the twelve dollars an hour, twelve dollars USD is the minimum wage for Hawaii. So like you gotta figure somebody who's working twelve dollars an hour, eight hours a day, it's gonna take them two days to buy one hundred dollar US uh one hundred dollar pack from Street Fighter Do. It takes two days of their life. So then you then you would take that metric. Okay, so it takes it takes two days of your life living in Hawaii, working at minimum wage to buy a ninety nine ninety nine pack. But if Don with if Don Buka is saying like the minimum wage is sixteen dollars. So sixteen dollars, sixteen dollars times ten is you know one one sixty, and his hundred dollar pack is one thirty. So it, it takes less; it takes one day less to pay for one hundred dollar pack. Yeah. In Canada, even but beyond the the, you have to break it down into what is the wage that somebody is making, how much hours it's going to take to obtain a monetary goal versus a different currency and a different pay rate right so if you break that down into minimums like the absolute lowest amount or metric like you the 12 dollar minimum pay is in hawaii of 2023 it'll take two days to reasonably afford a 99 dollar pack when you when you're talking about usd so the time it takes to make a hundred dollars in us dollars versus the time it takes to make that same amount to accomplish the same goal in Canada is different. Yeah. Yeah. Free to play casual mentions here. He says, uh, let me make sure I, I, I want to repeat this. Is that he goes in India, average one year wage is 3000 USD. 
And oh gosh. his first paying job was $160 USD per month after 20 years of education. That 160 USD in India bought him a lot, but now in Europe, 2,000 euro, euro, I don't know, EUR a month isn't taking him anywhere. So it's nuts. Holy cow. Yeah, you you break it. You Well, the the you, sometimes you can get lost in the numbers. You, you have to look at the time because yeah. the, the time is the constant. Like you cannot change. You can change how much money you make in, in that time. But there's a minimum amount of money that you can make um, that's based on what your government says. <laughs> but, like, there's a minimum amount of money that you can make and a certain amount of time that you have to spend in order to make a certain amount of money. So, like, the if we're going to go down this route, I want to break it down into time. How much time does it take the lowest paid person to accomplish the same goal? That's something, uh, something like that. Sorry, I'm getting really philosophical now. I know this is a, a video. No, I mean this is it, this is it, it's not 100 percent like a on Street Fighter duels, but it's something that we should take into account. Yeah, we could skip for it later and talk about this after the call. But it is important to understand like value and time is oh, different. Yeah, it seems absolutely. different for everyone. That so is definitely how much, how no. much value. How much value does this hundred dollar pack have? If you live in Canada, it's a day's worth of work at minimum wage. If you live in Hawaii, it's two days work yeah. at minimum wage to afford this pack. So it's like when you look at the monetaries, the, the monetization that's set inside of the game, and you you base that on inflation, overhead costs, um, you know, what kind of job you have as a person or like what, what you do. Like, you know, you, if you break it down into time, it's like, okay, so I make... I make a, a decent wage, so like I'm looking at I'm looking at these items, and I'm I'm making my judgments based on, you know, how much time of my life do I have to spend to buy this thing? Is it, it it's super, um, it's super, what do you call, uh, philosophical if you think about it that way, or anything you do in life in general, like if you're gonna buy something, try to break it down in how much time it's gonna take you to make that money, and then yeah. try to see if it's worth it, you know. I mean, that's it what, is an idle we're game. Doing. We're we're all controlled by time, regardless of where where you're at. <laughs> Precisely. But, so I, I have a question, just to like, if so, going back to like, uh, so this game is coming out of here, crunchy, A plus, whatever, maybe joint venture, all three of them, they bring the game to EU, rest of the world, outside of you know home location. And stuff like that, and then it costs money and stuff like that. Wouldn't then the cost of these packs come to CR, A plus, whatnot? And then like I'm just trying to figure out where like this kind of stuff goes back to like the devs in terms of getting less for the more you pay in this game. Yeah, that that's actually a good question. It's like, how do they see that versus, I guess, the player base? Because like I've seen this like same sort of thing when it goes to like other games, and it's I'm just, it's just very convoluted to try to figure out what's going on. It's like blame is being shifted here and here and here when one side doesn't want to take blame for something when it is negative. It's a it's a no, 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 hold on. I, I can answer this. So it's not really uh, anyone shifting blame on another person. It's more like us trying to, well, actually, to be quite frank, so many people in the industry don't tell players the information I always tell you guys because they're scared of the backlash and they don't want you to hear the reality. And also, I kind of do it because I think it's important for you guys to know. Yes, um, yes. But there's, there's, there's reasons why community people don't mention this or anything. But the, the difference is how a licensed game operates, totally different ballpark. So what you guys see with packs, the things that are added, there's multiple teams involved there. Firstly, the publisher is obviously making money off of whatever is put there. Yes. But you have to think of the items, what's being added to the packs, how the packs are created, what is in that specific pack and the items associated. That's the devs call. So the devs call that. And how they value their items, that's how they value their game. 
as publishers, we don't know their game. The devs know their game. So that's where that ideology is. Okay. So then what I like I look at the packs here, you're saying that the devs value the Yes. Red that's crystal. Your question. That's that, that's to answer your question, yes. Hundred okay. percent. Okay. Yeah. That's how they value each of those packs you guys are seeing. But how that money comes, that's obviously more in the publisher because we're bringing this, as you mentioned, to then, the regions that we're offering it that they probably wouldn't have in the first place. But yes. So then, then the other question is then, if you guys, like, you know, as a publisher, expect a certain amount of money and then the devs control what's going into those packs, why is it then the further you get, the the like uh i guess you could say like the more like in terms of poison packs you suddenly are not able to even look at or purchase a pack you were able to buy say a stage ago that might be a development decision i mean at the end of the day they but, make their uh, game right uh, not you guys sorry i don't mean to say you guys but i'm saying if the publisher is expecting a certain amount of money wouldn't that also affect the revenue that the publisher is getting because so like in my case, right. And I'm sure there's other people who are the same. There was a maximum amount I was, was I was going to spend on a poison pack, right. Which was around $12. And then once I saw that it went from 12 to 32 being the minimum, I'm like, forget it. Why? So yeah. now in that point, I'm not going to spend money in this game anymore. Like from those packs, right. I might buy something else. Maybe, but now I look at it and I see a poison pack. I just click it off my screen. It just, it's immediately a write off. Right. I mean, that's a development thing. You could always leave it in, in game feedback or something, but I mean, something. That's interesting. Some asking, it's like if, if there's this thing, then how is that a development issue? If publishers are expecting money, money, but then that's cutting off a revenue source for the publisher. I mean, that's correct, but also let's think of it in like the bigger scope of this, because a lot of it is a bigger scope. The game made 10 times more than we expected. So because of that, we don't see those small things on the publisher side that you guys are mentioning because the game is doing fairly well, monetarily wise and players wise, which is great that you're telling me this information. I think it should be in game feedback, but it's not something you should expect us to know because us as publishers, we don't know the game. You know what I mean? We're publishing the game, but we're not product experts. We're not the devs who understand their game and they've been, you know, working on it with Tencent for, you know, years now. And they're working in now on the global version here. So, I mean, putting that all together and it, it kind of makes sense. You know what I mean? But I think that should be in game feedback for sure. I mean, that's not something that you know, we're aware of, um, but yeah, I mean, that I like the feedback. Like, I, I think would, that, I would yeah, put it in no. game feedback. I, I haven't put it there because I just thought that was the game, the way the game was intended to be. But if that's something that should be in game feedback, then yeah, I'll, I'll definitely post that there. Nah, man, yeah. you need to yell at them, yell at the devs and yell at publishers. That's the only <laughs> no, way they're going to know, man. I don't to yell at anybody. I'm just, I just want, I just want information because I really enjoy the game. Like I wouldn't be here if I didn't enjoy this game. Yeah, I, well, I'm, I see. Yeah, but you gotta be respectful, obviously. The, like, uh, a Dino can obviously see how he handles it, but like, from, oh, I'm not gonna come in here with sure you kins on the devs. Like, yeah, <laughs> everything is he brings it to to the to whatever team it needs to go to the way we say it. So that's the that's why um when the topic of pity comes up, I I like to say how if I was a dev, I wouldn't care about like you and your pity because it's more work for me but that's if i was a dev y'all need to be grateful that i'm not a dev but like if i was a dev and i saw a topic uh, a comment that said game suck dev sucks you're bad i'm just gonna think you're an idiot so i could just imagine like that's what they're gonna see when when someone put, like portrays messages like that you, you know you don't you kind of yeah. just want to be like you don't want, obviously, no, I'm not saying you need to kiss their ass or whatever, but I, what I'm saying is, like, t take your point in the most concise and descriptive way with respect in, in, in it. 
yeah, that's what I tried to do with like I brought up the frames in the feedback and I tried to categorize it. Not necessarily about the frame, just as just communication as general, because I thought that would come across better than ranting about a specific frame when that's yeah. not essentially the issue. The issue is communication, not the frame. Right. I mean that was one thing that we mentioned like a while back that we're trying to improve and that's going to be a hurdle that we have to pass and of course the only ones that will see that is going to be the new players that come in or regulars that stick it out enough to wait for that because it will happen it's just going to take time again we don't we don't own the devs and that's where that relationship is too there's a difference between like the games that you guys bring up it's it's like a lot of the games you guys bring up, it's like they're both the publisher and developer. But if you think of it like in kind of like a company, right? If the company is both the publisher, developer, and they own the IP, that's a lot of less teams they're going through. And that's only like a couple of heads, maybe one real head that gives a yes or no. So that's why you guys are able to see so many things from games that's like connected to that analogy. So like, oh, we need more communication. Where, where does that come from? It's easier for a publisher who owns the developers to say, hey, guys, we need to give more information. Let's do this. The community wants it. It's easier to say it like this because you can kind of tell them what to do in a respectful way. You can't really tell partners what to do in a respectful way. To do that, you have to, I mean, you can, but you have to do it slowly because you don't want to tarnish, tarnish that relationship because the other thing that people don't know which again not many people in the industry talk about this and i'm not saying you need to know this or care about it but it's good information to know as a player who's going to invest in these games is the fact that a lot of those negotiations and how those happen it could be like for example me right like i'm a community person let's say i joined a dev meeting and i said hey guys we need communication right now instantly if we don't do it right now, everyone's going to hate, et cetera. You guys are making us look bad, yada, 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 okay? What if I just did that, right? The, the problem is this. The devs can then refuse to have any conversations with the publisher anymore. They could revoke or get the licensor to revoke the license. So what does that mean? All of you guys who are playing this game, you will no longer play this game because of the tarnished relationship that happened in the inside. That's why we have to do this respectfully so we don't lose the rights to the game. You know what I mean? So you have to, you know, it's just like you were, you're, you and a content creator, right? You guys yeah. talk it out or something, but you tell them, yo, because of this, you, you, you fucked up the edit on this video, people are hating on me. Why is that? So then you lose that relationship with that creator and then you lost that audience. You lost all that that you guys, you know, did together. So like that's what I'm trying to bring out too, where people are like, okay, we need communication like this, like this, like this. That's not the relationship we have here. They're partners, they know their game, we're publishers, we're helping bring it to regions that will give you guys the ability to play this game because originally, as most games, they don't have a plan to bring these games globally. They just don't. Because they look, again, at the revenue and the players and they look at other games and they're like, wow, so the trend is people don't spend. That's how they see it in broad, because the expectations of Japan, how they see it, how they want these games to thrive, and if it doesn't hit that, that's the that's the exact reason why they don't bring games. But there's publishers like Crunchyroll, Bandai Namco, um, various other publishers in the industry who want these games to bring it because they want people like you guys to enjoy it. You know what I mean? That's the only that's the only logical thing. But with that. There comes prices. There comes a price point. How you talk with, you know, those layers and understand that, there's a lot you have to go through. But something like Genshin Impact, I know there's a lot of great examples you guys bring, and I'm not discrediting those examples. Those are great examples. I love them. But the problem is they're the publisher, they're the developer, they're the IP owner. They are the entire hat. And everybody in that hat is working together in one company. And it's going to benefit everyone in that one company. Yeah. So that's just like the realistic point of view of that. Um, I have one question, but I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to answer it at all. Uh, pity. Will we get it back? Was it taken from us? 
Yeah, I, I, I don't have the comment. <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know whether it exists or not. That's the comment I can so, give you. I'm just going to say, kind of, this is not a slide against you, uh, Dino, or anything like that, but just the explanation. Um, I work in a I work in a field where I deal with contractors and stuff like that, but it kind of seems like it's more so the devs wanted to bring it broadside. There was a better bid brought in from here and you guys are working with confines of the bid, which is fine. Like, which is fine. I'm just saying this, it, it kind of sounds a lot less like a partnership and more like a contractor keeping a bid to abroad versus an actual true partnership. Um, I mean, you could say that, but the other thing you have to take into consideration is cultural differences. So, for example, if a Western IP game was licensed, it's better for them in their negotiations with a Western company because the Western company is going to be easier, so say. I only say this because I know people in the industry who worked for industry, uh, Western companies. I think it's a little bit easier. Um, the way that like Asian companies are, the way they have viewed things, how you post stuff, etc. There is a rigorous process for everything. So, for example, like even social media, all those posts you guys see on Twitter, each one of those posts has to get approved. Every single one of them before it can go out. You can't post if if that if if those posts consistently went out, that can tarnish the relationship. That can already be like, hey. We're going to take this IP away from you. So that's why there's like a rigorous process to everything. And it's not something so many players understand when it comes to licensed games. They see like the bigger name. Like they're like, oh, Crunchyroll. They're obviously the devs because they're a huge name and they're, you know, operated by Sony now. It's got to be them. But in reality, as a games team, we're a small team within a huge brand and within that small team is publishing right so we're publishing under crunchyroll games we're not publishing under crunchyroll okay and our team is not huge in that way to be a development team um and again how asian companies and how that usually works is we try to go with the teams that is already developing an existing game that is already in the homeland of that game. So Street Fighter Duel is a perfect example of this. Um, but a lot of other titles that Crunchyroll Games worked on, I mean, obviously people are like, oh dang, like the publisher was the reason for the for the takedown. There's various reasons. There's developers who just give up on the game. So they have every right to give up on the game. People think they don't, but they do. That's why it's a partnership. So if the devs are like, oh man, we're not motivated anymore. I don't really want to do this project. I want to work on a different project. They can 100% say that. They could say that tomorrow. Even if Street Fighter Duel is doing amazing, they could say that tomorrow. Any dev in any... Um, that's also another thing that people are not aware of because then they would be like, oh, if the publisher really had say, they couldn't do that. They would just fire the person who's working for the company and they would hire a new one. But that doesn't work in these like Asian titles, gotcha games and stuff. It's either the game didn't make enough money, the devs are also seeing like it's not doing that well profit wise. Do they have you know, do they have the motivation to keep the project going? Do they really want to support the project? Is it time to move on to a different title, work on something else? You know, there's a lot of questions and talks about that that the devs can do themselves, that the publisher can't just say, oh, no, you guys can't can't go. Like, we don't have that say, right? Are you so. able to tell the devs, like, hey, this is kind of like a 911 situation? Is that something that's there with, between you guys? Well, if they're going off metrics and whatnot, then they're going to... That's an impossibility. That's true. What do you... Wait, I mean, I mean I'm confused. What did you mean by 911? Well, like, um, uh, well, I, I, maybe not even one, but takes put, uh, what do you call your code red when you need so to do something ASAP? I, I mean, oh, we, right. ha like, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Right. Oh, we have. So there's been like game breaking bug reports where people are like, yo, I'm getting this error. And we saw like 11 reports within five minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's 
code red. That's, that's me code red. Saying, okay. To the devs, devs fix it immediately, mm. usually within the day. But that makes sense because it's disrupting players' reason to play the game how it is. You see what I mean? So something that's code red like that, I can escalate immediately because they do have to fix it, right? Like it's that's not supposed to happen in the game. Okay. Okay, that's understandable. Yeah, that's yeah. that's just like general kind of. Okay. Things, but I don't think there's a I don't think there's a cold red for the store or anything like that. No, no, no. no. I I didn't mean it like that. It was just more of like oh, uh, okay. is 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 Dino able to say hey like, hey devs, this is a big red button that needs to be dealt with like sooner than later because. Yep. Okay. Depends what it is. Like, yeah, you know, something game breaking or, you know, there was somebody, there was like a, I don't know if people remember this, but there was like a dupe that like some YouTuber posted within like the week of the game coming out. Yeah. Um, whoo, that was code red. Like I was up. Luckily, I, like, I, luckily I woke up at a interesting time. I woke up at like three in the morning and then I had like a bunch of pains. I was like, what's going on? And it was about a, like a dupe, like a dupe bug. I was like, what's this? Oh yeah, I remember and, that. Yeah. So when I got that. I already sent it right away. Um, like the product owner was still awake because he usually works on a lot of titles. Uh, so, so to keep in mind for people here, we don't just work on one title. We work on multiple titles. So I work on like every Crunchyroll Games title and future ones that are coming out. Um, so I'm not just on Street Fighter. Um, but you know, when that happened, it was like, whoa, we got to get this fixed. And yeah, they they patched that within the a few hours. It was it was no biggie. So. Then we had to put like an announcement and things like that, obviously. But things like that, yeah, I can definitely, you know, let the devs know as quick as possible. Because again, it's not supposed to be in the game in that way, right? So And how do you how how do you commun um uh, how do you like communicate with the devs on the topic of communication? Like um, are you able to share a little bit more light on where they they stand in terms of, of communication? and where the publisher stands on that so that's kind of one of those things where oh man that's that's like how do you communicate <laughs> that's like really basic stuff but it's like you go into a meeting i can't really say like the instance of what i deal here because that's like internal stuff i can kind of give you an idea of like a previous company i worked for but you know you come into a meeting you have the devs you have you know, you're, you're talking to Japan, you're like, hey, guys, like, you know, we've been seeing some people say this and this caught us by surprise. And, you know, it would be great because we didn't even know this info. Like, is there a way that we can work on this? And you got to talk like that. And then they'll be like, oh, right. Sure. OK, makes sense. Not really something that we thought of, you know, talking about, um, because, again, the devs and what they're doing their job is to make the game, edit the game, et cetera. A lot of people, how they view the devs, they're like, oh, the devs are hiding stuff. Well, that's not true. Because if you guys can see the new modes that came out, a lot of positive stuff, right? But let's take out the negatives. There's a lot of positive stuff that wasn't communicated, right? So that's just them doing their job on developing the game. They don't have, they, their, their work and what they're paid for and all that does not revolve around them having to write anything. That's like an extra thing that we're asking them to do for like any title. They're not required to do that. So. Okay. And, oh, I and, just want to be like, oh, sorry. Go, go no, no, no. I'm just like saying that that's interesting. That's you. You wanted to say something? Oh yeah. I was going to say like, like in regards to my last communication thing, I'm under the strict thing that everybody should be able to get something like that like the this this frame like i'm under the strict i i don't like gatekeeping i don't like anything like that the only thing i advocate for is just like information right like i think it's great that people who've worked up there and pro like focused on resources to get their team up there and all that stuff like that's great that's like stuff that should be happening i just you know wish there was more information on alternatives for for certain things like it's a really nice surprise and all that stuff i just 
it's just weird how it's sort of like worded versus how things worked out. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I think that's just, um, you know, when the development teams work on this stuff, it might have been something they bypassed or, you know, that's that's like the things that you bring up. It's like things that we as a publisher definitely don't know what's going on. Like 100 percent. We didn't even know that until you reported it. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't even know about it until Tix brought it up. And then I was like, wait, what? Yeah. And I looked at the game and I was like, oh, for real? I was like, oh, well, maybe if I click it, I'll get a little bit of a kickback. And there was nothing. And I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. I, I like, think I it was the fighting spirit. Or not the money, but like the, the red gems on that. Sorry? I think it was the fighting spirits I uh, Tix brought up as well or something like that. Um, I, I don't know if you remember this, Dino. Um, I messaged you. I was like, hey, I think Fashion Sakura's fighting spirit might be bugged. Do you know anything about that? And Dino was just like, wait, really? And I was just like, "I that's what I'm being told. I'm not quite sure. I just wanted confirmation. And then he went and checked. And then he was like, oh, yeah, they, they, they fixed it. Like, in that process of him checking, they fixed it. Oh. Yeah, there was a lot. I mean, a lot of the fixes were, I mean, a lot of the fixes were during, you know, the events that maybe people were very vocal and negative around, you know what I mean? So it's like they were still doing stuff and fixing stuff and adding stuff. And it's just a lot of things in the community gets, uh, how do I say, overshadowed. So you don't even get to to see that, you know, there was things fixed because everybody is like really fixated on like how an event was run. And how like poorly the community has been voicing that, for example. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of those completely go out of their mind out of the picture. It's just like the game offering forty characters. Now I don't like giving this example because I know it's not a popular example. But given how I know how the industry works, the devs could have said, Hey, we're not gonna give you forty characters at launch. We're gonna give you thirty characters at launch. And those characters, those 10 characters, if we were to slowly do that per week and we gave one, you could change the perception of the community like that. Yeah. Because then they would be like, oh, look at that. It's going in the fa it's going into the pools, the general pools. B Zangief is coming. Wow, that's cool. Oh, somebody I can pull with gems. Thing is, people don't realize like when they came into the game, you got 40. You know, you got 40. Yeah, yeah they, no, right. we'll give you half and that's it and you would have never known that but this time they're like okay let's give you 40 yeah so no I, i've been playing star rail behind uh, the scenes you know just like on my own just you know chilling out and there's like next to nothing but the way i understand that game is the way it goes is they release very few and then they keep going with banners blah 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 so i understand that like it's very generous with 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 characters and stuff like that right off the bat but for me i don't play gotcha games really right so like i would have never even known that this many characters being in the game isn't even normal like i would have never known that yeah that's why so, um i like, brought it up know, earlier i think some of my other friends might not have known that either because they're not really gotcha players either which is it, that's why, why i brought it up earlier point yeah, that's why I brought it up earlier, because I was like, in the terms of Infernos and Masters, um, and how they're trying to catch up, I guess, in terms of the other factions, and then also, like, that's why I, I asked, like, if if the game was with 30 units, and then they added the other 10 slowly alongside the other Master Inferno, because um, uh, IQ mentioned uh, that he prefers... A pay to win unit if you're gonna do pay to win you'll do the pay to win unit alongside um a free to play unit so fashion mm -hmm. uh trendy cami and street poison it obviously the perfect example and what would the game be seen better if they like how dino said let's say it only launched with 10 and these we said it was seven uh master infernos if each of these seven master infernos was tagged with the other 10 so like let's say let's just throw out 10 random names right let's say uh akuma was launched with fei long vega was launched with uh chung lee and so on and so forth would that have been better 
Because the other thing I think of too is trendy Cami and Poison coming out those two times, right? So mm-hmm. what if they put another third character in that mix? Like you just said those ten, but what if they did that? So they put Beast Zangief, Street Poison, and Trendy Cami. You see what I mean? So how that alone could change perceptions. Yeah. Do we agree with that or no? I will say if Beast Zangief came out as a uh you know, quote unquote, I guess I'll say in this case, premium unit versus where he is now, uh, I'm sure there would have been a ridiculous outroar because Beast Zangief, we can all agree, is actually dumb. And yeah, like imagine if Beast Zangief like, came out as a tr- character <laughs> after launch. That's exact. That's insane. Like, well, yeah. Like, yeah. The legendary or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, like, hindsight, we could see that. If it happened at the time, we wouldn't have really realized his power because not as many people would have had him and then we'd be like oh how did that guy get up there you know what i mean but like now that we all have him and we're all where we are know how to utilize them thanks to you know people talking in the discord and it's like it could have been very different like Dan was saying yeah it's it's an interesting outlook because I, I i love when he said that because it's like it's true like how how would the game be is how would the game be seen because like they could have easily just been like, all right, here's 10 units. And then the rest of the 20, 30 units would have been over time. But they, they like, I've rarely seen a game launch with such a full roster as how Street Fighter Duel has. I mean, the other thing to think of it too is let's say we launched 50 or 60. I bet you it would still be the same sentiment we're seeing right now. Like, it wouldn't change. Well, it's because people... Like, especially, uh, you know, North America-wise, you're, like, if you want to talk about different graphics, then yeah, North Americans are about the new and shiny, for sure. Like, I played I played Destiny. I don't know if you guys play that, but anytime a new weapon comes out, people are raging and, and, and fiending over that weapon, and if anybody gets it, it's like... They're well, farming the hell out of it. And then you get the crazy have and have-nots, the yep. haves don't want the have nots to have the have you know what i mean like i i understand it does get sticky i was going to bring that point up earlier when we were talking about uh shoot i, I don't even remember anymore so many was, topics yeah i think it was i think it was just like leaderboard chase obviously the people at the top of the leaderboard don't want the lower people to have it because it happens i was going to say again in destiny where there's weapons that come out where it changes the meta and the people who are able to get it they try to gatekeep the other people from getting that because they don't necessarily want the competition and i think that's just that's just that's just power gamers in general and when it comes to like a game where it's demographed to towards casual crowd that's like not something that's seen but for the for the people that are in it it's like ugh, you know no, I did uh, just touch on that point um, that you just made. I did actually realize that quite a lot with the um, MH10 event as well. Like a lot of the people that had them at double S or triple S. Yeah, the, they, um, second, they could get a free one. They raged. It was like, yeah. Single free one. Like, just give them it in the collection. And then I think it's like once once he was gone and they were back to, you know, people trying to lend out um, the MH Ken for like the events and stuff. Yeah. I was just seeing a lot more of like the higher tiered ones just sticking there. Like I know this one guy on my server, he's yet to loan out his MH Ken Bison or Akuma to anybody at all. Um, and it's like stuff like that that I'm a little bit... Um, not necessarily too for or against like again you can't do what you want but i just feel like it's a bit counterproductive you know on on my account i personally everybody who requests a unit from me um i look at their level and if they're like if they have a certain number of like ss characters or if they're a certain level i don't lend it to them i lend it to the people who are like lesser you know what I mean? Like, I want them to be able to progress their things. But I have an understanding of the game. You know what I mean? So, like, it's not so people don't need your good units. It's like, you have exactly. good units yourself. Like, Why are you asking me for like, mine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get that. Like, yeah. 
You get it. You You're get just it. You being get greedy it. right now, sir. I don't I, appreciate it. I mean, you say this, you say this, but and I'm, this is definitely first world struggles for me at the moment. But um, I am trying to clear thirty six twenty four, and I've been trying to lend out or get like a rose or even like a trendy cami from a friends list, and just nobody's lending me one, and I'm quite upset. It's like I want to try and progress for once, like. Someone just helped me out here. I mean, 36-something? Yo, bro, you're doing pretty well. Bro, you broke the game, my guy. You're not You're not even where. <laughs> I think I could get there, but like I'm, I'm just saying, gonna I'm say, four, Trendy, let me won't do shit for you. Uh, won't do anything for you in 36. I Ask mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to try everything at this point. Like, I'm just... I posted one, my like, lineups a bit earlier that cleared uh, 36, 32, and... The things before it, I'll share them again in a sec. But it's perfectly doable without like any special pay to win units. Like the only pay to win I'm actually using is like Bison and then an SS Rose. And I'm doing fine with that. Like an SS Rose in the assist for my guy. Okay. So you don't really need that many pay to win. I'll post the lineups in a sec. But I am level 330. Keep that in mind. Oh my Jesus God. Christ. I'm a, I'm a few levels behind you. How the hell are you that high of a level? I'm like one bro, something, I bro. I told, you how much I, I told you how much I spent, man. I spent around Yeah, that's already. true. I remember. I remember. A mega ultra well. I'll post oh, wait, I'll post it in. Well, that's, that's, you know. I'll, it, I'm, I'm not even that big of a whale. I'm going to be real with you. Like, I would have been way stronger if the pity reward wasn't gone. Because I spent, I spent five one hundred dollar packs, worth of diffs, mm. on Tkemi, and I got one copy, and that is why I'm so salty about the pity reward, and that's why also I just want to clarify Wait, that. Wait, hold on. Can you say that one more time? I, five one hundred dollar packets, worth of diffs, for one singular trendy Kemi copy. So what was that like? How much is that? Like fifty fifty per hundred pack, right? Uh, it's 80. So it's 400 diffs. Plus, I bought, with the gems I got, I bought another few diffs. So all of those combined, which is like probably another six temples. So that's 460 diffs on one singular copy. I just want to point it out. And that's why I am really waiting for a diff the a pity system because it is really. Not worth it for me to spend at the moment well, because well, of the experience. How angry would it make you if they introduced the pity system? Right it now? wouldn't because I would have a reason to spend again, and I I would be like, okay, yeah, that that's it. They removed it. It's fine. That's their decision. If they want to bring it back, sure. That's not only benefiting me. I'm taking the better picture of the game. A pity system will benefit everyone, right? Sure, I will, I lost money there, but it will benefit the bigger picture of this game, and that's fine for me. If I'm the guinea pig, that's bad. I still can't understand. How are you struggling on chapter 36? Because the double team and, is... And, but Tix is on chapter 36. And he's yeah, but he... And he's no, like no, no, a no, no. and plus levels below you. So Beast Tangif can carry anyone to 3624. Because of his interrupts. After that, you need two different teams. You can't use the same team for those two waves. Mm -hmm. So you don't have your beast and gift to interrupt. So you actually have to have high level hero, high do level heroes. Do you have charm? Uh, I charm don't have charm. That's the only X move I'm missing. I love the fact okay. that a beast and gift can only be on one team. I, I I'm I'm slowly waiting for the rest of the Discord to catch up, and then they're gonna start raging and crying because they only have one beast no, and gift. I can't yeah, wait for it. Beast and gift on one team and Dante on another team. Dante is. Better CC than B Zangief, do you know? Yeah, that? but you, you, you need Dante Triple S to be able to take but he Can paid, I be real with that I don't want to spend 1k and a friend of mine spent 2k on Dante and got just an SSS? Just an SSS. Just an SSS, SSS, SSS yeah, yeah, I, I need work. to cut the money, but I just like to speak on what he said on the PT system. Well, I am free to play, you understand? And I get like, well, I want to spend like 5 or 5k and trust me, bro. I get completely shafted. And the few um a um A tier or A tier unit I get was completely trash unit, bro. Like a Brucey looking guy. Like, come on. Oh yo, Phil Long is there, bro. Phil can be used. He's useful. Yeah. Long is a good I'll, 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 I'
like okay. I clicked out of that. Uh, I do feel like they should add a PT system because like, I remember that how there's also free to play place in this game. Uh, yes, um, this guy in the madhouse, please stop. Okay. But um, as you can see, like fights for me are just manual and resets whenever my uh, unit dies. And now I have to reset so, again oh, because my opponent died. What's the major problems, do you think? What's right? your second uh, team? Uh, I posted both in game the discussion. Oh. So what's the major problems with the game right now? Is it the pity system or is it something oh, else? Uh, the from, major problem oh. that we need to focus on it so the devs, like one by one, let's feed them the From a whale perspective? No, 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 it's from a player system. perspective. Well, well, you have, well the here's the thing, wait, 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 before we, we ask that question. You have to lay in context that remember the target demographic is casuals. So okay. ask your question sure. based off yeah. of that. Yeah, okay, but because the differences here. are like okay. completely we're, we're different here. for the different casuals, players. Yeah. Free to play and whales. All of us here are we're, we're not just one category. So I ask you all, what's our big problem with the game right now and how we can improve it? So we can talk to the devs, make a big feedback that goes upvote to them massively. And they look upon it and say, okay, if all of them agree on this one, let's help them and give them that thing that they are, they are asking about. Oh, I Is missed the pity system. I missed a big part of the call, but I think it's clarity. If we're talking the big, yeah. the big, it is clarity towards all the players in terms of the missions that's coming with events, the events themselves and how the events will play out and the, event, the missions like the border that was uh, released after people already bought it. Notes, you are you are actually um, mirroring my main concern. Okay. Developer uh, we notes? talked about power creep. I think power creep is fine as long as base units can do the same content, even though it might be slower, as long as they can do it at some power level, mm -hmm. right? I might be a week behind. I might be, you know, whatever behind. But as long as like a unit doesn't come out where you cannot do say 40 to 20 damage if that happens unless you have this unit then it's fine but when it comes to like the, the stuff in the, the, the shop then yeah i think communication is the biggest concern other than that i think this game is like you know i, I think the game is very fine and very fair towards like most of the players and my other only issue other issue was the uh getting less for paying more I'm not yeah. even that big of a whale, but I can see the packs and I look at it, and then I look at people who are willing to spend that, and I'm like, man, bro, I feel bad for you, bro. I don't pay more than like six to twelve dollars for something, and I look at the twelve dollar thing, and I look at the six dollar one. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I ain't even buying the twelve dollar one because the thing that matters in the pack you don't get. No, well, yeah, I completely agree with that, um, especially with the uh, MH Ken event as well. Um, yeah, because I ended up having to like top off the whole the whole bar, right? And I ended up spending, I think it was on the forty the forty eight ninety nine. Don't don't quote me on that, but it was like the 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 halfway point between the most expensive and the cheapest pack. I ended up having to buy an extra one of those um, mm -hmm. simply because of the really weird numbering that they gave us all. Yeah. So where I just need like two more tiers to get the last pity, I ended up having to get like twenty something tiers um, for no real reason. And it's just like a case of when you're looking at the the pack pricing, it's like you're not getting double the rewards that you're getting um, well, the from the previous pack. It's always like less and it's just really bad in that regard you, you do get double but it's not the thing that you necessarily want like so if we look at our current special summon pack at uh i'm using canadian prices so bear with me at 650 i get 12 uh the the the, the demon soul stones and three special summon tickets realistically you're buying this for the special summon tickets not necessarily the bloodstones you go to the $12 pack, or $13, right? So double the price. You get 24 which is double, but you only get two more 
special summon packs. So you get one less card for double the price. Yeah. And then it's you, like punishing you double that more. again and you get less. So it's like the one thing that's actually important for you to purchase, you get less and less and less. However, the one thing pertaining to the event, sure, you do get mm, actually yeah, you do get you get you do get double. Mm, actually, no, this one, no, no, no. So you get double from here here, and then you get less of both here actually, and then you get even less stepping up. So from one to one, you get double. You go to the next part, you get less of both, and then you go to the next one, and you get less of both again, and even actually less points. So the higher you go, all three, you get less and less and less. So you're actually punished for you know whatever i mean you could think of it as a good deterrent from spending more why so in business you don't want to deter from spending i don't get it like i and get anyway, it from the i get it from the money, mental yeah, yeah, hold on i get it from out. like the part the side part no, that no, you no, don't like want if you're, if you're, yeah if you're looking at making money as well, you think it would be even across the board like, yeah uh, yeah because like it blows well, like, it blows my mind because like in a business aspect, you want people to spend more. As the customer, obviously, you know, you don't want to be addicted, all that stuff like that. Like, yeah. I get the balance. But if you're the business, why are you actively making, letting people, like, oh, not maybe, why are you technically forcing people to spend less? Okay, so I, I'm going to put this, again, this information that we talked about before, right? So the publishers put the price cost. Like for this game, for example, yeah, but they, they are not the developers, so the developers put items in. Now, understanding that, you can see where the disconnect is, right? Because that's not the publisher saying, "Hey, uh, let's look into this." This is kind of like the developers looking at the price points and saying, "Okay, this is what the publishers gave us. Let's you know fill in those gaps with the items we feel is essential for those prices." But again, you know, if you feel that's an issue, which it seems like you, and then there's also a moderator that we have that's actually been like investigating that, and he kind of saw the same trend. So if you're noticing that, like, use that game feedback section and get people to to upvote it, so you guys can get more bang for your buck. The uh, only thing I can think about oh is, from a dev aspect, if you're saying this, is that they're front loading, getting people into it. But then on the back end, for like the big whales, like when Payne used to like spend, when whoever else used to spend, they notice that they're getting less for the money that they're spending and then they're not going to spend anymore. Yeah, like that, that was a t- turning point for me. Um, because well, the if, I'm, if, I'm being, if I'm being honest, if, if it wasn't like that, if it was like a one-to-one all the way through, um, I definitely would have bought, you know, some of the special sawn packs for um dante a lot more than i initially built anyway um plus because of one how i spend money on gacha games yeah. or even sf store like on a monthly basis um and two just the way that it works out because i don't want to be having to do mental maths you know every time i come to the shop weighing up calculating what's worth buy... what's not yeah exactly it's like do i want to buy one ninety nine dollar a 99 pound pack or do i want to go and buy myself you know, five of the ninety nine P packs and you get six of the the the, the like five to five pound packs and then let me get one of my in to create the value, you know? Yeah. And then throughout that whole thing probably have to call my bank to say it's not fraud, it's actually me. Um, you know, this yeah. it, it, it's just so much. I mean there is there is what, one thing I wanted to point out. There's one wanted to point out, like actually you <clears throat> know, I I'd stepped away for a little bit, but now that we're back on this topic, so it is, it is weird, and honestly, I, I quite frankly, I feel it's incorrect to give less for more money. But at the same time, it's like, so the publishers set up these buckets, right? Like this is a five dollar bucket, this is a ten dollar bucket, and this is a twenty five dollar bucket, and the developers are putting their stuff in the buckets. Like they don't like yeah. the the publisher just makes the prices, right? But yeah. there's also there's also uh, an overlying problem, like an like a like an like a problem that's throughout the whole game itself is is the balancing issue. So even if even if the items and the prices were corrected to reflect 
a more typical metric like we would be getting more stuff for the price which is nice but we'd be speeding through the game so much more faster you know what i'm trying to say i understand that I yeah understand that. but so like there's, the point it's not only is it a monetary a monetary structure problem it's also a game balancing problem but, and that's that's 100 percent on the dev think about it like this so you know <clears throat> dino said said what he said and I'm going to take that as it is, right? So as you go up in price, you're getting less and less and less as a consumer. However, the dev and the publisher is making the same amount. The, the publisher is not going to really look at it because they're happy. Devs are happy. But in actuality, they're it's essentially like skimming off the top, like but except the consumer's paying for that skim. Oh, absolutely. It's not. Uh, it's not pretty. Yeah, like it's, I mean, I'll totally, not make, I'll totally make a uh, uh, a game feedback, which it feels weird because like I'm not that type of spender. I'm not spending on these packs, but yeah. I can I can see the trend. <clears throat> but the packs are the the packs are limited. So like, if you were to if you were to balance out the contents in the packs yeah. by the price, you would have to just all you would really have to do is rebalance the amount of times that people could buy it. So yeah. the the type of game that this is and um i know i keep talking about this and i just to just to solidify my points i'm sorry if i keep repeating it but there are barriers there are barriers in place of this game that you either spend time trying to beat it or you spend money to beat it so like at a certain point you can't spend any more money because you've already beat everything and like it's really up to the developers to learn where that balance is based on the data that they have but the if you are to impose the idea that we should be getting more items in the twenty five dollar pack at a better value than the five dollar pack, which I agree, then there needs to be a clear a clearer picture of how of what kind of barrier that creates moving forward. Like we can't even so if we increase the items, more and more players are gonna start going from chapter thirty six through thirty eight as they'll start existing in chapters 40 and 41 and that's the end of the game <laughs> that that we know about right Damn. so then I, I then, then the developers have to balance all the other types of content around that not just the story chapters they have to balance the the towers they have to balance the shadow city they have to uh, balance the raids they have to balance um guild wars a lot of things that go into it yeah. <clears throat> but i do agree that the metric is the metric for the monetary structure is wrong but it if you change that balance they've got to balance all the other things that you can accomplish as a player they have to they have to increase the ceiling without creating too much disparity for low spenders you know what i'm trying to say like there's going to be yeah, certain things that I'm, I'm actually curious uh there's a few whales in here if they could like speak on it i know Flake and Chapone. They are not whales, bro. Come on. Don't don't tag them. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I guess this is the question. No, is, what when, do we consider a whale? A whale man? They're not whales, man. Get what, away. Ma, what do we yeah. consider a whale? Okay. Let, let's put that as the well, baseline. $10,000 more. $10,000 more. That's a whale? $2,000 okay. more, okay. more over what? Okay, okay never mind. I'm a whale. Okay, GG. If you spend eight, 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 eight big ones, you had a whale. If you what? If if you if you spend eight eight from tenth um and so forth, you're you're a whale. No 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 no. Listen, every gacha has a, has a specific category for a whale. Uh, Street Fighter Duel, you don't to be a whale. It means maxing everything. Blah blah blah. How much does it? Ah uh, uh, no way. Whoa whoa whoa. No 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 no. no. I disagree oh, that, with that's that. That's a megalodon. That's a megalodon. Okay. Okay. I never disrupted anybody. You didn't give me a chance to talk. Yes, sir. I played many gachas. One of them is Astro Fable. Astro Fable. To be a whale, you need to spend one million dollar. I had like more what? than two hundred players spending one 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 million dollar. That's not uh, Singaporean. It was a Singapore uh, guild that I was in. I didn't spend anything. I was just checking out the game. It's called Astro Fable. There's many videos about it. You can check it. But there's other other games, other gotchas that, that people are playing. The, the 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 when you call them a whale, when they achieve everything in the game. So whales here between five thousand to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I, I, mean, I would agree with that. Some people, you're a whale, huh? Because you've made it a certain distance in the. 
Well, ho- well, the thing is, we're not talking about distance and uh, like the outcome. Game progression does not. Qual- yeah, qual- pro- progression uh, does not qual- quantify, qual- quantify will. will. We we're 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 talking no, no, about monetary. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So VIP. Yeah, VIP levels. Let's put it in VIP. Levels. <laughs> are you at double digits VIP? If so, you are yeah. a whale. Like, are, are we talking about um, VIP fourteen, VIP twelve? Is that like a whale? I mean, I'm, I'm VIP cons- eleven. I think I put like five bills since the game started. Let's consider what the game gives, right? From VIP fourteen onwards, you get special deals in your mail that sometimes yeah. give this, sometimes give this. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I, I feel like that nobody's speak spoken about this. Nobody's talked about this I'm because about because it. they're clear about it. They wrote it that is that you get the benefits. So everyone knows about it, so it's fine. So I feel like from that point on, when the devs, or when, not really the devs, but when the game gives you rewards, because you spend that much, I feel like that's when you start considering that like person to be a whale. Yeah. Yeah, because like, I've seen, I think, I think in one of Mark's videos, he showed his VIP, and I saw how many points you needed to get to that point. Maybe it was even pain. Maybe both of them. I saw how many points you needed to get that point, and I calculated how many I had versus that point, and I was like, "Bro, yeah, no." Are you so, whoa. Me? So here's the thing. This is what I want to say because, like, VIP nine is like attainable by a low spender. A VIP nine more. is fucking. Uh, it's very cheap. Yeah, it, I love how y'all say it very cheap. It's insane. Like we need to like be probably set a, a, a minimum barrier to what a whale is because like pain and those players, I consider them megalodons. When you're talking like 10k up, that is not a whale. Like that is more excessive than a whale. Like how, like that that that's what I'm trying to say. It's like those there, called, there are levels like of white, that. White whale. That's called white whale. <laughs> Yeah, because, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, Chapone said that he's VIP 14 and, or something like that. that that's <laughs> 13. That's a whale. Like, that's that's not a cheap person, in my opinion. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Again, it depends on the game. In AFK Arena, if you pay $10,000, you can't compete with the top 100. You need to pay more. In this game, if you pay $5,000, you can be the top one in the game worldwide. It depends on the uh, game. Worldwide within your bracket. It's not worldwide. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking worldwide. The first one to clear all the content in the game. Every, yeah. Dominate just, everything. Oh. 5,000? That's all you need is 5,000? Yeah, but if you're smart and you pay 5,000. Man, I didn't pay anything. Yeah, you if you know what and what you just spend, you, you can be you can be the other. Yeah. If you spend correctly, <laughs> of course, $5,000 gives you everything, access to everything in this game. You'll get every unit maxed to two triple s how many stars it's up to you and the rng of course but if you, if you want to talk like mega mega whaling i got, gave you an example there's a game that you couldn't compete unless you paid at least a million dollar yeah it is, an, it is not bullshit game actually it's auto everything there's a lot of luck involved as well right yeah rng is a thing also if you want to be a successful uh, free to play, let's say one major thing you need to have is luck. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That is true. All right. So on the top on this topic, we'll I'll start winding down because we're already way past like three hour mark. Oh, but this I was only here for an hour. Well, wait, here's the thing: is <laughs> like the podcast <laughs> itself will end, but. Yeah. Uh, it, any anyone has any last questions that they would like to ask before the podcast ends out? If not, we'll keep the call going, and y'all can still ask questions anyways. I just want you guys to answer one thing, so we can go and make a feedback, big feedback about it to talk mm-hmm. to the devs. Yeah, aside of money issues and monetization, that's the, the, those things doesn't concern casuals, uh, low spenders, and free to play. It only concerns heavy payers. What do we need to improve the game? What do we need to send a message? Like, what message should we tell For the me, developer? it's literally just communication. That's like literally... That's it? Like, developer notes, you mean? Uh, before patches, uh, drop notes, Yeah, patch or if notes. you're going to drop something in the middle of an event that affects how you spend event currency and things like that. Yeah, don't give out banners to people that don't deserve it just because. 
<laughs> they don't yeah. know they oh, deserve the it. But don't don't state that it only comes from the shop and then give another option later. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Yeah, there's some yeah. some things bothering when they do shadow fixes. That, and stuff that's like legitimately that. my only gripe is just communication. Like I'm, as a person, I'm huge on that. So oh. when I see it in big games, it's like it's a big gripe. They drop the info script. in the notice, right? In game. No, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. I looked. I no. looked just in case, just to make sure it's not there. Oh. Oh, like the mission. The mission. Didn't, you, no, you, couldn't you, look you can, in the you mission? can click the little notice board, and it'll tell you what's like patch notes. It'll give you patch notes. Like there's update notes for five ten, and all that stuff, but nothing indicates that change. But I've the been, in-game, 36, 36 in-game 36 notes tell you that you can only spend uh, demon soul stones to get it. Until you pointed out last night, or was it last which, night? Which, which, night which one? Which needs the uh, demon souls? I don't get it. That frame, the, the, frame, frame. the frame that you got. The one oh, in the yeah. shop. The one in the shop. That frame that you got for getting three hundred. It cost yes. fifty demon soul. Yes, yeah, so I, I saw that, that with fifty demon souls, and then they gave me one they in my. For yeah, they gave yeah, me one for it free. Cost fifty demon souls oh to buy God. it, and then Is they gave the it for free. Yeah, it's the same exact frame. Yeah. That's why I was mad. Don't do it. That wait, was wait. that's a slap in the they face. Gave it for free or gave it for high ranking people? No, no for, for the free. Same, for the same the same thing you talked about in Bison Dante 300 million. Yes. That's the same frame that you have to buy for 50 or for 50 oh demon soul stones. That, it's the same frame. That makes no sense. Yeah, that's why I was that's why I was miffed. That's why I made a uh, a thing about it. Yeah, I think, I, I, think, I, think about that. I do think that there should be a an option where you know there should be an option. I do think that I just think it should have been better communicated. That that's it. Yeah, or a fix if you have a duplicate of something. Yeah, um, I clicked yeah, it and I just got the three um, soul stones out of it. So for okay, having a okay. frame already, I got there was I'm, nothing. It, it just it's just delete. To, uh, Dombuka. I'm trying to talk with everybody. Oh, sorry. Uh, and, and, and with Tix. No, no, no. I'm, t- I'm talking to you also. With Tix, because Tix is now a helper and uh, he reaches out to people and people listen to him, uh, the most respected player, because yeah. he's free to play and broke the... So we're trying to send the feedback every week, a mega feedback, to include things that we need to change. Is it more important the notice or the pity or the type of heroes or... What, what do we need things to be fixed or addressed one and one? So we, we need those points. And you guys are telling good points. But what I saw from the devs is they fix one thing at a time. Maybe every month yeah. they fix one thing or every two weeks. So what's the major thing that we need to... Pity. About? <clears throat> pity. Pity I and communication. Pity yeah, pity system. Pity. Pity and communication. I think those are the wouldn't, two wouldn't pity biggest and communication things. communication roll into the same thing because. So, Tix, can you make a you know, f- feedback about the communication and the pity, a good one, because you know how to do it? Well, I feel like there's been so many pity feedbacks that it's just communication is the most important because. Well, the, the, we need the, we need more. That's the one thing that Dino did make. Like, even though you put it in one week, if it's a recurring topic, and it keeps coming up then then it's a way for him to say hey this is a problem so we want it to be every week so we don't want it to be one time we want it to be if if it's four to five times then dino has a a, a opportunity to say this is a really big thing because look this is not just one week this is the fifth week and i'm keep bringing it up to you you know what i think yeah. about yeah it don't do it per day year. per week per week it's is like what Twitter, we need you it. gotta keep you gotta keep retweeting it or or getting or getting a hashtag going for it to start trending. So the issues need to start becoming a trend in their de- in the developers' office, like when they get their customer. When when our community management group for Crunchyroll says like, "Hey, this is becoming a trend and it needs to be corrected," that's what that's what we need to treat it like. Like you, everybody's gotta. Everybody's either got to say the, the same thing all at once. Or everybody's got to, or one person, one or two people has to post every week. 
because that's what happened with Monster Hunter Ken, right? Everybody said the same thing all at once, yeah. and it was like hot fix. It's not only also our community, it's all the players, even casuals, players that doesn't use Discord or Reddit, they went to the, to the, uh, what is called, App Store and stuff like that, and put a review, like, it's very much uh, pay to win, I mean, we will pay, but it's too much, like, fix the system and stuff like that, so they listen, yeah. not only from here, here also they listen from us, but it was like a trending thing all over the globe, just not only on, based on Discord and stuff. Yeah, uh, I think Pity I is think also hitting awful. that. I, I hear many videos on YouTube. Uh, I see many reviews in the store also talking about the Pity system that it's not existing in Divination. Many AFK Arena players and, and uh, Epic 7 players and stuff like that coming in and telling like, we came to this game, it's amazing, I love the IP, it's uh, our childhood and stuff. But there's no pity, shame, how could you fix that and stuff. This so, is the yeah, first I game I've ever seen that has no pity. Yeah. Personally, I I'm, I'm, I will context. I don't play many, but out of the handfuls yeah. that I've played, I, all of them have had pity. Yeah, I I tried even Genshin and and I'm playing Honkai now. They have pity at three hundred. I can't it's, even it's talk about there because you know I, I don't I'm not a gotcha. I've seen it in Honkai and it's been nice. Yeah, that I mean like Seal, then the character that launched with Honkai, I got one. And now it, yeah, made, it made me feel that. good. I was okay. like, "Ooh, sweet!" Yeah. Am I gonna ever play this game? Probably not. But it felt good to be like cared for. When they're like, "You know what, baby? Yeah. Here's a little they, candy they for you." You have soft pity, soft pity at seventy-five, and hard pity at ninety. No matter what you do, you're gonna get it. So it was. Oh, nice. you get it at ninety. Interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. That, so just to, we'll start winding down the call itself. I probably, I really want to uh, push this out. Uh, for those that are listening on YouTube, we have a wonderful, amazing Discord. Uh, all the people that you heard, these guys are the theory crafter masterminds. We are all the tryhards, and we love the game very much. We have options that allow you to put game feedback that can be pushed to certain teams. And uh, the community manager makes sure that that's pushed forth every Friday. Um, and we also have this call that we try to do every Friday as well yeah. to build the community as well as other things that we're working on. You know, uh, we have wonderful content creators. We have wonderful people. It's just a great place to be. So please, you know, join us and help make this game better. For our, from everyone from Friday Fighters, like, comment, subscribe. We're out.